What do you do to relieve stress? Hello Tarantula lovers, I'm Alex and you're watching Tarantula Haven. Yes, it's been a stressful couple of weeks here at the Tarantula Haven with Hurricane Dorian giving us that close call. Um, we had to take off time off of work because of it after having only been in school for a few weeks and then going back was almost like completely starting over. And uh, uh, with all the hurricane prepping and all the thing that goes along with it, um, yeah, it was, it was pretty stressful. So today's video features a couple of updates. Um, one of the updates that I'd like to give you is that on my last video, I had to separate out my P. Cambridgei into separate little deli tubs or deli cups, should I say. And um, at the, on the video, I had only gone through about half of them because I had run out of deli cups. I had misjudged how many I had. And I promised you that I would give you a final count when I got that done. So I did get them separated out. I bought more deli cups and the grand total was 284 slings. So yeah, that's a lot of mouths to feed. It does take a little while to take care of that. And uh, yeah, I have still have them all. I haven't traded them off or sold them yet. I'm still looking to do that. But in the meantime, I still have to take care of them. So yeah, you know, it takes a long time for that. The main port part of the video is um, my stress relief that I'm talking about here. And some of you might think that it's the tarantulas and the tarantulas are my stress relief. Um, they are part of that, uh, but they are not my main stress relief. I do enjoy taking care of them and feeding them, although right now because I have 284 extra mouths to feed on top of my regular collection, it does get to be a bit of a chore because it takes so long. But my main stress relief is my aquarium. And I posted a video way back in, I guess the winter, uh, around December, I think, maybe January. Um, I had started uh, aquascaping, and this is something that was completely new. And right after I'd started it, my aquarium was old and it sat dry for a little bit. And when I refilled it with water, it sprung a leak after having done all that aquascaping. So I had to completely remove everything and I had to put everything back into the new aquarium. So that was a major undertaking that I had to do. So I wanted to give you an update on that because what you saw in that video was just the beginning of that aquascaping and while we were hurricane prepping and had that time off it gave me time to shoot a little bit of a video while i was taking care of that because i wanted to share with you how much it has grown and what has happened with that particular aquarium so this is what my aquarium looked like before it sprung a leak and uh, it was coming along pretty nicely, although I didn't have that many plants just yet. And this is what my aquarium looked like after I had switched it out. And uh, I decided to switch to a black sand and I included some fluval stratum underneath it so that it could help the plants grow a little bit. And um, one thing that I wanted to bring to your attention was that I noticed that my shrimp were carrying eggs. So I kind of wanted to do something to see if I can preserve those eggs or I can allow the shrimplets to, to hatch out. And um, my idea was to, um, I didn't want the shrimplets to get sucked up into the filter and there weren't that many hiding places for the shrimp to, to get into and avoid being eaten by the fish. So what I decided to do was that I was gonna use a netting that is basically a brooding cage kind of thing to keep any kind of fish that are gravid and are about to lay eggs or have have live fry and i decided to put the shrimp in there and see if that would work and uh see if the if the shrimplets would develop inside of that netting and i'll show you that to you here if you noticed it it was on the upper left hand corner of the tank and there it is and 
after a couple of weeks, something magnificent happened. Um, yeah, the shrimp laid their eggs, and next thing I know, I had bunches of tiny little shrimplets in there just swimming around. So um, it was pretty cool. It was something that I didn't realize or didn't think it would work, and it did. So I was pretty happy because I really enjoy my cherry shrimp and uh, so the results were pretty, pretty good. I decided to wait until the shrimp had gotten a little bit of size to them before I released them into the general population. So they lived in this netting pretty much the whole time. But when I felt like they were big enough, I decided to go ahead and release them. I wasn't really sure how the fish were gonna react, if they were gonna try to eat them or not and they don't generally bother my cherry shrimp my adult cherry shrimp but these were a little bit smaller so i was kind of you know taking a chance just to see what would happen i figured you know if they if they got eaten then i, I could just the adult ones would just produce more so i knew i'd been successful already and i could do it again it was pretty cool to watch them tentatively come out of the netting and just start swimming into the open aquarium. And we got a couple of brave ones that decided to take off and right away you can see there the um, cardinal tetras were immediately on them trying to eat them trying to investigate what was going on so I guess they were <laughs> they were tempted to eat them but it looked like most of them got away and after one after they landed on the moss and were just around in the tank they weren't really bothering them all that much and this is what my aquarium looks like now and it's really due for a haircut <laughs> um, everything has just grown up like crazy and um, uh, you know it was it wasn't something that I really expected but when I chose my plants I purposely chose plants that I knew were gonna take their nutrients from the water column or I chose plants that I knew would would thrive well in just about any condition. So um, that was my goal here was to get those types of plants and just see how well they would thrive. And as you can see, they did relatively well. Um, I've got some crypts there at the front and, and those things will just grow under any circumstances. It seems like they just do extremely well lots and lots of java moss in there that's um, really good for the shrimp and the shrimp will actually go in there and lay their eggs in there and the, and the little shrimplets will thrive in that stuff so I, I included some rotala over here on the right and it's doing fairly well but i noticed that it wasn't turning red and that's because i have insufficient lighting my lighting is considered relatively low even though it's pretty bright um, the amazon sword in the back is not doing all that well so i'm actually going to pull that that requires some tablets to feed it so i don't think i want to go that route and it looks like i had a major explosion of duckweed it came in some plants that i bought and this stuff just grows like crazy i keep it because the shrimp seem to like it they live up in the roots and they eat off of it so i like having it but i don't like it taking over the entire tank so i do need to thin that out quite a bit and i do need to do it pretty often 
Fortunately, thinning out duckweed isn't really all that hard. You just go in there with a the net and you scoop up as much of it as you can. You dump it off and uh, this is probably something that I do every maybe three weeks or so because it does grow really, really fast and after a while it just covers the top of the tank and the light doesn't filter through very well so the plant starts suffering so I just have to keep it minimized. Next I'm gonna pull out this Amazon sword in the back. I, I don't really like it. it. It's just growing real spindly and like I said it requires more fertilization and that's just an added expense so I just don't want to go that route so I'm just gonna get rid of it all together and uh, I do like this Lud Ludwigia that's in the middle that I'm reaching in here right there it grows nice and red and I also like this long crypt that I have so I'm gonna put that over there on the right hand side This anacris really needs trimming. Anacris is one of those plants that'll just grow anywhere, literally. And um, it grows about an inch a day, so it grows extremely fast. Sorry if you hear my bird in the background there. So it does require trimming quite often. And this Rotala over here on the right, um, I liked it much better than the dwarf hair grass. So I replaced the dwarf hair grass with the Rotala because I just didn't have this, the lighting for the dwarf hair grass. It wasn't growing at all. And uh, the Rotala does much better. And it forms this nice little carpet and the shrimp just absolutely love to get inside of it. And uh, you know, I can look in there at any given time and there's usually shrimp within those leaves hiding down there. And these crypt plants in the foreground, those are wonderful. They do extremely well in low light conditions, so they'll just kind of grow anywhere. Um, the stuff I'm clipping off right now, this is Ludwigia, and uh, it's also doing very well. I like that it bushes out and it turns nice and red, so it gives some color to the tank. And I'm moving that more toward the middle where I had the long crypt over there. And as I mentioned before, Java moss is extremely good for the shrimp and I've got it growing on this little log right here and I've also got it in the corner and um, it, it just grows really nice and it forms a nice little place for the shrimp, the shrimplets to hide in. But every now and then it needs a haircut so I just go in there and trim it up. Uh, I like it to spread out over the log but not just bush out everywhere. And as a last part of my cleaning routine, I just use a scraper to scrape the glass and remove any of the algae that's clinging to it. It gives me a nice clear glass that I can see through so that I'm not looking through all this messy green stuff. And this is my aquarium after everything has settled down and I've cleaned off everything. And I think I like the layout a lot better. 
Um, one of the fun parts about aquascaping is that if you don't like something, you can always go back and change it. Um, if you noticed when I first started out, there was a lot of green in here and I, I liked it at first, but then it just seemed just too green. So I started experimenting and finding other plants that turned red or brown and I wanted to throw some more color in there. So now it's looking a little bit more colorful than it was before. And uh, because things have bushed out so much more, um, the shrimp are actually breeding on their own without me having to have the net in there. And I don't have to keep that ugly thing in there and they just produce shrimp on their own. So I'm constantly getting lots and lots of baby cherry shrimp. And I like the way the uh, crypt here is just flowing in the water and uh, the shrimp seem to love it too, this a little Amano shrimp hanging there. And as you can see, now that the, the duckweed is gone, the uh, shrimp really love the anacris and they just kind of hang out up there on the leaves. And you can see I've got tons and tons of them. And my cardinal tetras don't look very colorful right now and that's because the lights had been off. So when the lights off there they color down and uh, it, once the lights come back on then they fire back up and they get that beautiful red and blue on them. But they don't look as spectacular when they're not fired up. And here's an Amano shrimp and you can see all the eggs that it's carrying. Unfortunately, Amano are not as easy to breed. They require salt water. Uh, the fry will only live in salt water and then you have to gradually put them back into fresh water. I love my cherry shrimp. I can't get enough of them. Oh, there's a little poop that came out there. <laughs> but yeah, it's just it's one of those things. I just love watching them walk around and clean everything and interact with each other and interact with the fish. And uh, you can probably tell why it's so relaxing and peaceful just to sit there watching. It's almost like watching a nature show all the time. And that little guy poking his head out there, that is a Siamese algae eater, and it has been invaluable to my tank. I had a little outbreak of black hair algae, and these guys are about the only thing that will eat it, and it saved my tank, because that stuff is terrible and it's hard to get rid of. But I don't have it anymore because of these little guys. I've got two of them, and it's enough to get rid of it.
and this little guy here is an albino bristlenose placo and they're pretty unique i've always liked placos um i've always had one in my tank but I, there's so many more varieties now than when i used to keep an aquarium when i was younger these guys are so neat and the males will get these big bristles on their on their snout just like you see here and they're excellent cleaners good to keep around and they don't get very big they get to about maybe five five and a half six inches or so and there's my little coolie loach and I don't see him very often but when I do it's always fun to watch them they're always hiding somewhere underneath stuff but they come out when it's time to eat and I'll see them here and there and one of the things I just love about the aquarium is that the, the fish that I've chosen are generally peaceful and they don't bother each other there's that little Siamese algae eater that I love so much I got two of those but yeah it's just one of those things where it's just really peaceful because none of them are fighting or bothering each other maybe a few little skirmishes here and there where they chase each other off for territory but for the most part they're all peaceful and there's a little nerite snail another cleaner And there's the little female placo and uh, something else amazing happened and this was something that was totally unexpected because I ended up with a male and a female placo I didn't expect them to breed especially not yet because I didn't know they were the appropriate size for breeding but um, just one day I happened to look in the tank and next thing you know I had a little baby placo and uh, you know soon afterward I found another one and yet another one and now I've got a bunch of little baby placos in there so even they are thriving and that was a really cool thing for me I really hope you enjoyed that as much as I enjoyed making it. I just love my aquarium. It is a stress reliever for me. It's so relaxing for me to sit in front of it and just watch the fish go about their daily business. My little shrimp, I love my cherry shrimp and the fact that they're breeding on their own. It, you know, that's just remarkable because things have grown so well. They have space that they can hide in and, and breed and, and, you know, just not get eaten by the other fish. And, uh, the uh, the placos, the bristlenose placos, I never realized or never even thought that they would breed. Um, and, and the reason for that is I didn't even think they were large enough. So I was really, really surprised to find these little baby placos swimming around. And since I've done that video, I've actually had more appear. So um, they're breeding like crazy. Uh, eventually, I'm going to have to figure out what to do with those extra babies because they will overtake the tank. So um, I'll probably trade them off to a pet shop or maybe just give it to them because I just can't have that many Placos swimming around in there. So yeah, it was, you know, so it's, it's a fun thing for me and, it, it, and I just never expected it to do as well as it has been. Um, I've enjoyed it so much. I actually bought a nano tank and set it up as uh, uh, an aquascape tank. And I'm really enjoying that too because I've set it up as a shrimp tank as well. So yeah, you know, it's just one of those things that I really enjoy and really relaxes me. So that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, if you did, please give me a like. If you want to see more, subscribe. If you want to support this channel, I do have a Redbubble store where I sell Tarantula Haven merchandise. Any of the proceeds that come from the merchandise will go directly to help grow and support this channel. I also have an Instagram account where I post lots of pictures and videos of my tarantulas, more so than I do here on YouTube because it's a lot easier to post to Instagram. And uh, if you'd like to check me out there, it's at tarantula 
underscore Haven. So that's it for me today. Until next time, keep loving them tarantulas.